Uh, let us get to the oil prices. We told you they were three and a half year highs and climbing. A couple of things at work here. Number one, we got a massive drawdown in weekly oil inventories of nearly 10 million barrels. That got traders diving in with both fists. But these pictures on the left side of your screen, these are protests and at some point some riots on the ground in Iran paired with the Trump administration's threat to punish any country that buys even a drop of Iranian crude. That, of course, fanned the price flames. We are now above $72 a barrel for oil. The White House slapping a November 4th deadline on the sanction threat, saying, you buy from Iran, you're in trouble. Furious Iranian protesters at home say Iran's economy is killing them as it craters. Our next guest making a bold prediction for November when the president's sanctions kick in. John Hanna is the former deputy national security advisor for the Middle East. Uh, welcome, John. Okay, what's your bold prediction? What happens in Iran come November? Well, I think once the U.S. sanctions actually come into effect, Liz, I think we 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 have. Uh, shot the starting gun on the full unraveling of the of the Iranian Islamic Republic, this exper experiment in anti-American theocracy that's been bedeviling United States presidents for the last 39 years. I think we're we're then on on a countdown. Whether it's one year or five years, this this regime is is at its wit's end. Well, anybody who believes in I don't know, basic human rights will not shed a tear if Iran's Islamic regime, which supports terrorism, hangs political prisoners, says its number one goal is to wipe Israel off the map, and then the U.S. is second to be wiped off the map. We won't be sad if that goes down. But sanctions, while, as you say, might accelerate the end of that regime, they also sometimes have unintended effects, among them higher oil prices, which the president has specifically said he doesn't want. It hurts our consumers and businesses. Can the administration have it both ways? Well, we're going to we're going to find out. the The administration is now on a full court press, particularly with our allies in Saudi Arabia and the rest of the Persian Gulf, to try and get them to dramatically increase production over the next several months, to try and cover these Iranian losses, and hopefully that, to get together with whatever increases we can get out of the U.S. shale oil boom will uh, help stabilize uh, markets and, and, and stabilize the price of oil going forward because there really is a risk. Uh, markets are tight and uh, losing Iranian oil and perhaps uh, with all the troubles and disruptions in Venezuela and Libya, uh, we could be facing some real risks in terms of a price okay. shock later on in the year. Although I know our guys uh, here in the U.S. will step up, but do you believe other countries will comply with the U.S. and stop importing Iranian oil on our screen are the ones who buy the most of it? China, India, South Korea, Japan, they all soak up a lot of this Iranian oil. Um, do, you, do you believe they'll say, OK, and they will bow to the U.S. or not? Uh, whether we can get to zero the way the Trump administration is now talking about by November, I think is really, really questionable. Whether we can get a dramatic drop in Iranian exports. They're now at over 2.5 million barrels a day that they're selling on international markets. Uh, before the uh, nuclear deal with Iran, we cut that by at least a million barrels a day, and they were suffering a currency crisis in very, very short order. I think we can do at least that good in terms of intimidating and getting European companies, our allies in Japan and, and South Korea, to stop purchasing Iranian oil, and then we'll okay. work on India and China. Well, I need to ask about Russia. Russia is a net exporter. They don't need anybody's oil. But where does Russia stand on this? We have the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, in Russia meeting with President Putin today, who told Bolton that Russian-American relations are not in the best shape. Well, there's no doubt they're in very bad shape. And, and I understand why President Trump thinks it's important uh, for the two largest nuclear powers on the face of the earth to try and have a some kind of decent working relationship. The place we've been in the last several years is very bad and very dangerous. On the other hand, I have no illusions that President Vladimir Putin is going to stop attacking and challenging American interests until he's, he clearly sees, and there's a demonstration by an American president, that there's going to be a real price for him to pay for his uh, nefarious activities.